In the year 2041, Santa Fe College students and faculty will be here once again to commemorate the memories that was made throughout the history of the college. Starting the 16th, they will be having music therapy sessions and guitar lessons. As gas prices go down, car owners are taking advantage of this decline before gas prices start to increase in the spring. If the Florida Senate passes this legislation, in courtrooms like this one, 10 jurors would have to come to an agreement to impose the death penalty. The technique seen here is used to sustain the bee population in order to produce food. Hello, I'm Valera Thomas in the WUFT Newsroom. For Monday, February 20th, here's your News in 90. Hundreds gathered to protest in Japan today against the offshore construction work currently in process. That's your News in 90. Thanks for watching. Most bees are in decline, including native bees. Um, you know, a lot of it has not been documented, but, but what evidence is out there suggests that other bee species are also in decline. In Florida, there are 316 species of bees. The honeybee is a European species that most Floridians manage for pollination to produce food. Most bees we consider pretty important for pollination, um, and, and especially in crops. I've reached out to Ward Supermarket and Island Grove AG products, and they were unwilling to go on camera. Less seed and fruit yield can occur when bees aren't pollinating at a normal rate. Some reasons are taken into account because of this event. Most biologists, most beekeepers think that it's uh, a, uh, a multitude of things, including uh, like pest species like uh, varroa mites, um, pet, oh, you know, incorrect pesticide use, um, climate change, and we think all of these factors in one are, are contributing to bee declines. Due to the bee colonies declining, beekeepers may raise the prices, which creates a domino effect of higher prices being raised by the farmers. As a result, it will eventually affect the consumer. The perspective is that, yes, it's more challenging than it was in the past, um, and it'll continue to go that way. Um, definitely environmental factors. Pesticides is the last route a farmer wants to take to manage the bee population. A given farmer would love not to use pesticides. Okay, um, They're very expensive for the farmer and so the farmer is always looking for ways to minimize how much pesticide they have to use. Pesticides and bees may seem inevitable but there is a way. No matter how you do it, bees will come into contact with pesticide and so the, the best scenario is you've got to minimize the weight and there's a lot of different ways that a farmer can do that. The technique seen here is used to sustain the bee population in order to produce food. Sugar water is placed in these jars to feed the colonies of bees as a supplement to their diet and it serves as a breeding ground to maintain the population. The bees may lose their energy by flying flower to flower if there aren't a large quantity of flowers around. The sugar water is a helpful resource. Valera Thomas, WUFT News. For the next person sentenced to die by lethal injection in Florida, the jury will have to unanimously find an aggravating factor and then vote at least 10 to 2 to recommend a death penalty. That's a compromise position between the House and the Senate, which had originally wanted a 12-0 vote. The Supreme Court of the United States has never required a unanimous recommendation for death, and Florida's prosecutors believe that a supermajority, such as 10, is an appropriate number so that no one or two individuals can control the entire process. Prosecutors say it may take a serial killer like Danny Rowling for a jury to vote 12-0 for the death penalty. In nearly 300 death sentences since 2000, only 20% of the time was the jury unanimous. Defenders suggest that since a unanimous vote is required for guilt, it should apply for punishment. Juries are required to reach unanimous decisions in every other part of the law to convict somebody of DUI, petty theft, writing a worthless check. It, it just seems to make sense that a unanimous jury ought to be required to recommend that somebody gets the ultimate penalty. If the Florida Senate passes this legislation, in courtrooms like this one, 
10 jurors would have to come to an agreement to impose the death penalty. Florida is one of three states that do not require unanimous death penalty recommendations, but it's the only one where the vote could have been a simple majority. And I don't really care how they do it in the rest of the world. I don't really care about the academic argument. I don't really care about the statistics. I care about getting it right. Valera Thomas, WUFT News. It's just my favorite app on my phone, and I really like it. <laughs> a period tracker app called Clue can relieve a woman's responsibility to track her menstrual cycle. Brittany Simpson uses the app to estimate her monthly cycles. It allows me to be a lot more organized. Um, all girls know that you want to know when the period's going to come for vacations or, you know, that time to the beach or a camping trip. Um, so the predictability of the app is really cool. The Clue app has options for tracking temperature, bloating, and headaches. The app can also alert women if they are pregnant or not. I know that I'm getting my period the next day and I'm a lot more prepared and that's nice. And also, as far as like if I'm in like a, a relationship where I'm having like reproductive sex, it's nice if I'm like scared of being pregnant or something like that. Enter your typical cycle you might experience and the app uses the information to predict your time of the month for you. So another really great thing about the app is it has like a history tab where you can see all your previous you know, cycles that you've had. The app can allow a woman to export the data into a PDF file. Simpson says that it can be given to a doctor during checkups. A doctor who would want to know about her previous periods would be able to see all that like in a really digestible form instead of her trying to go back and remember you know, days of her period and what days were really bad or things like that, which I think is amazing, like that's awesome. The app gives women an innovative way to approach their upcoming time of the month. Valer Thomas, WUFT News.